Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. This is just going to be a quick little channel update and challenge update for you guys because you guys, we have less than 10 days left of this 60 day shadow work challenge. Well done. If you are doing the shadow work challenge for 60 days, 60 days is such a long time and i applaud you like that is really 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 hard work and you guys are so brave and you have so much courage to be able to put yourself in a position of working on yourself and kudos to you i i hope that you all had had a really good experience with this shadow work challenge with that being said the first announcement i'm going to go ahead and make regarding the shadow work challenge is that i would love to do a big round table with some of our participants, uh, some of you guys that are doing the shadow work challenge, if you want to, you don't have to do this, but if you are somebody that wants to come on my channel on Esoteric Atlanta and film a round table talking about everything you've learned about yourself, all your ups and your downs, your highs and your lows throughout the 60 days, then please email me at shadowworkchallenge at gmail.com and please put in the subject line round table. I'll put that information down in the description box below, but if you are interested in being filmed and telling your story, um, then just let me know. Email me at shadowworkchallenge at gmail.com. Again, subject line round table. Before we get back into it, because we are gonna look at the upcoming um, few days of the 60 day shadow work challenge, I just wanna make some quick announcements regarding uh, this upcoming week. So Monday, March 12th, I believe that's Monday's date. Let me just double check here. Yep. No, sorry, the 13th. Today is the 12th. So Monday, March 13th. Good thing I checked the date there. Um, I will be on Aquarius Rising Africa like always. I always am on Aquarius Rising Africa on Monday mornings. However, this Monday it will be back an hour. During the winter time, I'm on at 9 o'clock, but during the spring and summer time, I am on at 10 o'clock. This is obviously because of time change. So we are going through our we're, our daylight savings where we're jumping forward an hour now. So um, so for, for the next few months, I will be on Aquarius Rising Africa live at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This Monday, we will be finishing up the fourth tablet of Thoth's Emerald Tablets. And then next Monday, next week, we will get into the fifth tablet. With that being said, we already have read through the fourth tablet on my channel. So this Monday morning on my channel will be our part two of our Organic Portals episode with our mysterious guest, who hopefully will be doing some more shows with me and with Katherine Edwards. Again, the reason why this guest is keeping himself anonymous is because he's a pretty big person here in Atlanta, Georgia. He owns some businesses here in Atlanta, Georgia. And of course, this stuff is very controversial. So um, for his safety and for the best interest of his business and his employees, it's best that we keep him anonymous. So I know you guys understand that. Also, thank you so much to all of the res positive response that I've received from the ASEA sponsorship. I am like in love with this product. I am going to be finishing up. I've already filmed my vlog, my week vlog of my first week on ASEA, and I'm going to be editing that and finishing that up this week for you guys. Um, I can't wait to share with you on the vlog all the effects that I have noticed in my life um, with ASEA. The ASEA is very person specific and so it blows my mind that the product knew what to do to help me just as it knows what to do to help other people. 
Um, I just, I'm overwhelmed at everybody who's left comments about what the ASEA has done for them. I am just, it, that just makes my heart so happy. It's the, it's stuff like this that like really gives me hope in a new tomorrow because the human body is amazing. And the fact that this product is there to help your human body recalibrate and heal itself because the body wants to heal itself. That's, that's the body's job is to heal itself. But with all the toxins that we go through with everything we're hit with on this gangster planet earth, it sometimes gets very hard for the body to, to, to keep up that momentum. And so I am so grateful to this product. I'm so grateful to Katherine Edwards. She had been trying to get me to try this product for a while, bless her heart. I just, it took me a while to be like, okay, let's try this. And I'm so grateful to the company for allowing me to be able to make a living now doing YouTube so that I can relax more about finances. Um, I don't put any of my work behind a paywall. I don't judge those who do, but I don't do that. I don't put any of my work behind a paywall. I don't make really anything doing you. I love my patrons and my producers so much. My patrons and my producers are the absolute real superstars of this channel. And you guys should really be thanking them because they're the reason why I have still been able to maintain a channel all these years without really making money. So, um, so my patrons and producers mean the world to me. Um, if you would like to join, be a patron or producer, that information is also in the, in the description box below. You don't have to, but I am so grateful. So, so, so grateful to all of my patrons and producers. When all of this is over, I hope, I hope one day we can all have a big old party together. Um, whenever, whenever that day comes, but I'm so grateful to them. But with the ASEA, that's really helping me to like make ends meet so that I can relax a little bit about living life and I can focus more on making more content and doing more research. And so I appreciate that so much. And I'm so happy that it's a product that is in, in integrity, that it, it, the product itself has so much integrity. Again, if you want to learn more about the product, um, the number that's in the description box below takes you directly to Jay, who is from Spiritually Raw. He is, he has been with, do, he's been doing ASEA for a really long time. And so he understands more about the product and the business of ASEA than I do. And so that's, and so I'm so grateful that he is able to filter that for you guys because he is a wealth of information and so if you're interested in trying the product or if you want to be part of the business of ASEA just text Jay um, text Bryce info to that number if you don't hear back right away text again or just make sure you have the right number and Jay will get back to you and he will help you figure out what is best for you whether that is doing the liquid or just the gel or whether that or what if you want to do a business whether that's something that that you might be interested in. It's up to you and Jay will help you figure that out for yourself. I am just so grateful for both Jay and Hillis and Catherine Edwards and Danielle and the whole team at ASEA because I, they're such nice people and they're so um, incredibly helpful. They go above and beyond. So if that's something you're interested in, please, please take advantage of t talking to Jay about it because this is the way of the future. You know, there's abundance in everything. There's abundance out there for your health. There's abundance out there for your spirituality. There's an abundance out there for your finances. It's all there for for you for the taking. And that's what I really like about this company is it's, it's an idea of making sure every human being is okay. Not just a few people, but every human being. And so please don't hesitate to, to reach out to Jay if that's something that you're interested in. Alrighty here, let's go ahead and now look at the upcoming shadow work challenge because we have some fasting coming up. So let's go ahead and look at tomorrow, which is day 52, Monday, March 13th. New addition to the challenge, since you're at the halfway mark, make up your bed every morning. Your last meal should be between 5 and 7 p.m. No snacking after 7 p.m. as this allows your digestive system to rest so your blood has a chance to cleanse and heal other organs such as your skin. All right, warm up for both beginners and experienced. Exercise selection for everyone. Please pick from the following, either 20 minutes, beginning Ashtanga with Ashtanga Nurse, 60 minute Anusara class with Cindy, all levels, find your rhythm, 60 minute half primary series with Ashtanga Nurse, 60 minute at night your fire Anusara, all levels with Cindy. So again, you don't have to do all of these. You can pick one. <laughs> so um, so as, as we're getting deeper into um, 
the almost finishing up the 60 days, you're given more flexibility. I'm hoping that after 52 days, you have more, uh, more confidence in picking what exercise works for you or which one your body needs at the moment that you have more of a of autonomy when it comes to your body. Uh, during your morning shower, again, try to make the last five minutes of your shower cold to help with inflammation and blood flow. Meditation, healing childhood trauma with morning, which Saturday uh, of this week, the 11th, you actually worked on childhood trauma. You did a video with Mornay from Aquarius Rising Africa. You also were able to look into Kuan Yin, which is absolutely one of my favorite um, avatars, key codes from the Sophia Code. And so you got to kind of explore that again. All right, so let's go on to Tuesday, or excuse me, let's stay with Monday for a little bit. Food journaling, as always. And then over the next couple of days, you will be preparing for a potential three-day fast or three-day kitchery cleanse. So if you're Vata like me, a kitchery cleanse is probably gonna be better for you than a fast. Please know that this is optional. And if you struggle with dis disordered eating and decide to do the fast, make sure you're doing the fast for the right reason. If you're doing the fast, your exercise will be limited due to energy. If you are not doing the fast or the cleanse, you will have the higher impact options for exercise. Please do not use this time to abuse yourself or overdo it. Take these next couple of days to mentally prepare for whatever it is that you decide to do. Please note that it is not advised that you eat a uh, that you eat a lot before the fast starts. Maybe start cutting back a little bit in these next few days to prepare your mind and your body. Here is a link with information on kitchery cleanses. Again, this is totally optional. You don't have to do the cleanse or the fast. You can just continue doing what you're doing. And I have options. You'll see with the exercise, I do have options for people who are not fasting. So it's totally up to you. This is not, this is an experience. You get to decide what your experience is going to be with this. Shanti from Aquarius Rising Africa will be walking you through the fast if you decide to do it. If you need to contact Shanti directly, her contact is AquariusRising001 at gmail.com or you can visit her website. Bryce and Shanti discuss fasting. Here's a video you can watch. Preparing for your fast. It's equally as important to prepare your body for fasting. Before embarking on this water fast, please start gently cleansing your body two days before we begin. Avoid meats and heavy processed food, alcohol, too much sugar and caffeine. If you aren't already, start drinking two to three liters of water a day. Eat soups, smoothies, fruits in the morning, and lots of veggies. Now this is exactly this, I, Shanti wrote this, so here's from Shanti. Fasting is not about losing weight or having a quick crash diet to shed those un unwanted kilos or pounds. When done with the right intention and belief, it has huge spiritual benefits. It clears the mind and body of earthly attachments and draws us closer to the divine. It certainly requires self-control and discipline. As we deny ourselves the pleasures of indulging in many delicious and tasty diversions, something we often use to distract ourselves from what's really happening within. It doesn't only have to be about food. It can also be from social media, technology, sex, smoking, caffeine, relationships, or anything that you feel could be hampering your spiritual awareness and growth. The intention of fasting is to remove the physical trappings in your world and intensely concentrate on God. It's about aligning yourself with God's will and thereby, and thereby tapping into your magnificence that very often hides within the layers and, and way beyond. Sir Lawrence Vanderpost, a well-renowned South African author, spent many years living with the Bushmen and the Kalahari. He had this to say, The Bushmen and the Kalahari talk about two hungers, the great hunger and the little hunger. The little hunger wants food for the belly, and the great hunger, the greatest hunger of them all, is the hunger for meaning. There is ultimately one thing that makes human beings deeply and profoundly bitter, and that is to have thrust upon them a life without meaning. There is nothing wrong in searching for happiness. But a far more comfort to the soul is something greater than happiness or unhappiness, and that is meaning, because meaning transfigures all. Once you are doing what has meaning for you, it is irrelevant whether you are happy or unhappy. You are content. You are not alone in your spirit. You belong.
And I love that because that's a lot of what like the yoga teaching is about too. Like happiness and unhappiness come from the Zach. They're two sides of the same coin. They're your perception of events. So happiness and unhappiness is kind of like base level. We want to go deeper than that. Like what is meaning? Things to consider before you fast. You'll be prompted to journal these questions tomorrow, but for today, just contemplate. To begin your fast, it's important to have a purpose or intent. What would you like to achieve? Break an addiction, find deeper meaning and purpose for your life, end a relationship, start a healthier way of living. Whatever it is, be clear on your intention and have that as your focus. Please note that I said focus and not obsession. Don't have a rigid goal for the outcome in mind because God works in very mysterious ways. So rather focus on what every moment of your fast is bringing you, yet be specific. Sometimes you can see the full result in a week or a month. The gifts of the journey itself are what we can most benefit from. You will get hungry, no denying that. But it's during these times, remember that words of the Bushman. What great hunger is calling you from beyond the little hunger of the belly? What brings you meaning? Who are you really beyond the layers? Meditate, pray, be silent, journal. Observe your emotions and reactions as if under a microscope. At this time, what triggers you? How do you feel when you need to stop yourself from eating? What mental dialogue do you have to go on going on in your head? Take note of every little detail. Use your journal at this time like you've never used it before. Remember the objective is not to judge yourself, but if you find yourself being judgy to yourself and others, it's good to notice that too. Through my fasting experience over time and those who have fasted with me, I have found a general pattern that tends to happen with people. I'll give you some common experience shares, although I'm pretty sure yours may be truly unique to you. For today's journaling, Number one, how are you feeling about all the childhood trauma? Have you made any self-realizations about your life as an adult and the cause and effect of childhood trauma? From your childhood to adulthood, have you struggled with body image or eating disorder? And I really want you guys to focus on this. This is why we we, we tied childhood trauma in with fasting because again if you are still in that karmic loop of of having some body image issues like eating disorders i want you to really consider maybe not fasting yet give yourself time to heal from that before tackling a bigger obstacle but as always that is totally up to you we briefly spoke about body image earlier in this challenge has anything come up for you in the challenge regarding the way you view your body how has eating taught you to be as a child What did your parents teach you in regards to your relationship with food? Being totally honest with yourself, what is your relationship with food? Do you use food as a punishment reward system or to nurture your body? Do you ever, have you ever used food as a way to abuse yourself or as a way to seek control? Being totally honest with yourself is fasting or doing a cleanse healthy for you at this moment. If you were to fast, what would you want I think that's a typo there. What would you want to, to learn from it? If you decide that fasting isn't for you at this moment, why and are you skipping this? Why and are you okay with skipping this part of the challenge? If you decide not to fast and you're, are you struggling with this decision? Before you go to bed, go ahead and lay out your clothes tomorrow. That's we've been doing this the whole channel or the whole challenge rather and turn off all electronics and go to bed before 10 p.m. because that's the pizza time. All right, Tuesday, day 53, March 14th. Again, you're making your bed up. You're not snacking after 7 p.m. Um, let's see. So warm up for the beginners and advanced. For both beginners and experienced challengers, start to try st- try to start your exercise program by doing five Surya Namaskar A and three Surya Namaskar B unless you are involved in Shanti Sun Salutation Challenge as well. Here's myself doing a five A and three B. Exercise for everyone. Today your warm up has been provided, but the exercise is up to you. Take a moment to reflect on all you've learned during this journey and use your knowledge to now pick your workout. You can pick from everything provided in this challenge or do a class or workout that is not in this challenge that you feel the desire to try. Trust yourself and do it today. If you're planning on starting the fast tomorrow, be mindful. You might want to only do 20 minutes of stronger or you might want to do a more high impact exercise like kickboxing since your exercise during the fast will be at a minimum. If you're not doing the fast or the cleanse, proceed as you normally would using the knowledge you have acquired during this challenge to pick pick the workup that's best for you on this day. 
during your morning shower again cold minute cold water for the last five minutes same meditation over childhood trauma with morning same food journaling same preparation for the cleanse or the kit or the fasting or the kitchery cleanse and then the same same reference back from yesterday to really give you some some time to really think about this huge undertaking if you're going to do it okay journal to ask from shanti what you reviewed from yesterday to begin your fast it's important to have a purpose or intent would you what would you like to achieve break an addiction find deeper meaning and purpose for your life into relationships start a healthier way of living whatever it is be clear on your intention and have that as your focus please note that i said focus again not obsession you don't have to be rigid with your goals so give given the points that shanti has made what is your intention doing this fast so really be clear i think if you're really clear with your intentions very honest with yourself for those of you that do have disordered relationships with food you'll be able to realize in writing this down being really honest with what your intentions are if 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 this is something that you need to do or not so if your t intentions are to feed into unhealthy habits of starvation for starvation like a disordered eating um then maybe again just writing it out you'll realize that spiritually for you now is not the time to start but maybe that's a wound you need to heal first right totally everybody's going to be different though okay god works in very mysterious ways we read that all right so for those not fasting even though you are opting out of the fast what can you learn about the big hunger and the little hunger if you had disordered eating how have you addressed this in your life have you ever sought treatment for an eating disorder if so how did it go if not why if you don't have disordered eating but opt to fast why is that but opt not to fast why is fasting not good for you at this time no there is no wronger wrong answer here there's no if you don't if you just don't want to fast that's fine too um, but it's time for self-exploration, which you consider fasting at a later time when you're mentally prepared for it. And if you guys noticed for a while now in the challenge week, I've been having you have your last meal between 5 and 7 p.m. and not snack after 7 p.m. A lot of that is for many people to see when they are mindlessly eating. You've been like during the daytime you've been going all day. You've been working, taking care of your children. Your mind has had a focal point when you get into the evening hours and you're at home relaxing watching tv all of a sudden the mind is now able to kind of pull up problems you know past depressions anxieties all that kind of because the brain's a problem solver right and so sometimes people then will go mindlessly eat to try to distract from maybe some uncomfortable feelings that had been suppressed all day and so by taking away the stimulant taking away the uh the the distraction when you feel those emotions come up at night you can take to your journal and work through them and also from a very physical perspective as we've said if you cut your eating off earlier in the evening not stop, stop st snacking after 7 p.m you're giving your digestive system a chance to rest and because your digestive system is resting blood can now go to other organs and help heal other organs mainly your skin so people who don't eat after like seven o'clock at night tend to look better, tend to look healthier. It's because the blood, their blood has been able to heal their organs and their skin and help them rest during the night versus using all the blood in their digestive system to digest the snacking and the food, if that makes sense. So um, so just, just know that, just understand that the power is within you to course correct and change these patterns. So Wednesday, March 15th, day 54, day, this is the first day of the cleanser fast. All right. So again, you're going to have different options of exercises for people fasting. You are just going to be doing a few sun salutations just to get your blood flowing. That's it. That's it. Nothing more than 15 minutes. All right. Or not exercising at all. I would suggest some stretching, some, some sun salutations again to get the body detoxing, to get the blood flowing. But again, that's up to you. All right, for people who are not fasting, you're gonna either be doing a 30 minute kickboxing or 45 minute kickboxing. Meditation, you get to pick um, all meditation or sound bowl healing. Day one, please refer back to this as you go through day two and three from Shanti. Water menu for all three day remains the same. So you have 
how to create the actual cleansing, the detoxing of this right here. Day one through three, spiritual menu. All right, so you can, I'm not gonna read through all of this because if you are doing this, then you absolutely, this was sent to you in the 60 day challenge, so you can refer back to your template. All right, for Monday, uh, midday, sorry. And then evening reflection, so she kind of helps you through it, right? Night one for fasters, what to expect, headache, nausea, irritation, annoyed and hunger. Nausea is, and headaches are definitely because your body, is, because the blood in your system is, is not working your digestive system, it gets to go and pull out toxins from other organs. So that's why you're gonna feel the headache and the nausea is because your body's actually gonna start to detox, right? So journal, freestyle with prompts from Shanti. Of course, you're still feeling a lot of these emotions and more p potentially, but it's more important to remind yourself that the emotions that the emotions surfacing are asking to be healed. So rather than beat them down again or take them out on someone else, make the time to nurture yourself. Take, take a bath with Epsom salts or essential oils every night of your fast. Listen to calming music, take a walk, and most importantly, journal, not typing. Writing with a pen and a paper. Words have energy and the letters all hold vibrations that flow through you as you write. Don't be shy to write and express your deepest feelings in your journal. You can always burn the pages afterwards if you like, but writing is one of the most powerful forms of healing. Writing letters to people you have and never have to give them to the, to the person are good ways of releasing pent up emotions. This could be an angry, sad, happy, or grateful letter. Often we did find it difficult to express ourselves to others verbally. Sometimes we didn't get the opportunity. Sometimes we were too stubborn, whatever the reason, it's irrelevant. Write the letters and express yourself in truth. See what happens then. Make sure you get to bed early. Latest 10 p.m. on the nights you fast sleep is a beautiful way of restoring your soul. These are my, my journaling prompts. For those not fasting, you did kickboxing again today. This is high energy. I, Bryce, picked this intentionally for the non-fasters while some of your co-challengers were taking it a little bit easy today for their exercise. You pushed it. How did this high intensity of the workout help you, the non-faster, get emotions out? How did the kickboxing, which brings your bodies to the brink physically, help you work through the big hunger and the little hunger? For those not fasting, how is this, this choice affecting you? Are you comfortable with your decisions? For those not fasting, have you experienced detoxing symptoms during this challenging challenge? How have you worked through them? All right, so I think I'm gonna stop it there because that's a lot for this update for this video. And um, join us on again on Monday, uh, tomorrow with Aquarius Rising Africa. I'm sure that we will be talking about this before we go into the Emerald Tablets as well because Shanti is the one that's heading up the fast. Uh, of course, we'll be talking about the fasting in the signal group, but Shanti also has her own signal group as well. So please make sure that you join those. Um, if you have the template, from the 60 day challenge, the link to the signal group is in that template. I will also place that down in the description box below. For Shanti's link, she, link she will have to ask her, or you can ask in the signal group, in the Esoteric Atlanta support group, signal group to get the link from Shanti. All right, you guys, I hope you're doing really, really well. Happy March, happy spring, and um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.